Acadians are the problem child of Canadian history, but in the best way possible. We basically told off our parents. We were like, no mom, we don't want to sign with the English. No dad, we don't want to sign with the French. We want to do our own friggin' thing. So we moved out at 16 years old and we lived on the streets for a bit and then we formed community and happy families. We were able to build our society of French speaking rebels in Atlantic Canada. 1755 is when the English finally decided to deport the Acadian communities across the world. That trauma in history has been passed down, but today we fight for the language and the culture and a lot of cool stuff. It's Chiquita Mail here and coming live from my bedroom in Moncton, New Brunswick, in one of the many pumping hearts of L'Acadie. Welcome. In 2019, like, what's an Acadian? As an artist, my queerness was really, really important to put to the forefront. But then I also started realizing that my Acadianness was really important to put to the forefront. One day there was an event and some of my drag queen friends from Fredericton were in town and I was like, can you put me in drag? And I was their little drag baby. And they're my drag ma tantes. And my version of drag is all about self-expression and performance and identity. So what I mean by that is like, anyone should try out drag, but I also think that drag is an important art form and space for queer people. It's like, we do this for a reason. I do this for a reason, anyways, which is to like, give myself permission if I can go out in this armor and be the most queer self that I can imagine or create or perform, then me facing the pressures of society is so, so much easier. Chiquita is, I've said it so many times, but the cross between a clown and a blow up doll. And what I mean by that is I allow myself to be super comfortable in my sexuality on stage, all the while being like funny and having a good time and making people laugh on stage. I think performance and comedy is such a freaking amazing tool to pass a message because they're laughing, they're having fun, they're enjoying themselves, so the work is in the background. So then the next time you interact with someone who's queer and Acadian, like you've already witnessed that, you've already lived that exchange. I think mashing those two identities together allows for like an endless well of inspiration and possibilities because you can take anything out of Acadian culture and ask yourself, what would that look like if it were queer? And then all of a sudden, you get to create something that has never been created. And vice versa, if you take something out of queer culture and you ask yourself, what if that was French or Acadian? How would that be different? <laughs> I think my hope for the future is that people recognize that you can be 
queer you can be whatever you want to be you don't have to go to a big city you don't have to give up parts of your culture to celebrate another part of your identity Is it as queer people or as francophones or as both in my case we are shown that like throughout history we've been marginalized and assimilated into either straight culture or English culture. I don't talk about linguistic duality or like marginalization. I don't talk about it. I just live a version of my Acadian identity that's like super out there. Which in, in naturally just like shows that I'm not a victim of any of that oppression or any of that marginalization. I'm, I'm choosing to look beyond the history of our deportation and the history of our trauma and looking towards the future.